All right, welcome back to the Make or Break shop. This week we're gonna talk about making these maps. We're gonna get into all the software, all the different things you guys can do to make super custom maps in your shop with a laser cutter. When I got my laser cutter a little while ago, one of the things I really wanted to get into was actually creating maps. Uh, I love looking at all the different types of topography that people will do. Maybe there's like 3D stuff that you can do on CNC's, um, or you can do layered things with lasers, which we'll get into. But um, I also wanted to do just straight up maps like this. You can see some really good examples of that here and here, uh, especially on Etsy, people sell lots of these things, which is great, but usually the hardest part of this whole process is actually getting the file of what you want to make. If you want to make a map in New York, you could probably find that file, but if you're going to some super random place, uh, it's gonna be a lot harder. So there are all these data sets that are online that are free, and then you pull them into custom mapping software that you're able to actually generate files that you want. When I first started playing around with it though, the things weren't super easy to figure out. So I thought this week we would actually dive into a full process of generating one of these maps. This is uh, Athens, Georgia, where I live, but we're actually going to get into making one of Atlanta, Georgia, which is where I went to school. We're gonna use something called QGIS, and we're gonna walk through that software. All right, so let's jump into this software. This is QGIS. Geographic Information Systems. First and foremost, this is QGIS. So this is a free piece of software that you can download. This is uh, the Mac version. I'm running 3.4.14, I guess. All right, so we are in just a blank slate and we're gonna bring in some data. This kind of works with layers, so like Photoshop, and there's all these different types of data sources you can bring in. Uh, for my case, what we're gonna start with is OpenStreetMap. This is, uh, it's kind of just already built in. So this gives you a reference point on how you can get around and you can pull information from this. So uh, I am actually going to do a map of where I went to school is Georgia Tech, which is right here. So this is kind of what we're working with and there's a bunch of different layers that we can bring in. So uh, you can do add-ins and I've already got one uh, plugin that I've already got in here and it's called Quick OSM. And so this can bring, I don't really know what it stands for, uh, but it lets you do this. So you go Quick OSM. I'm just gonna give you uh, this dialog box. And what's cool is, so this is all the different pieces of data that you can bring in. I am going to be doing all the highways and the buildings. So we'll start with the buildings so and kind of see how that works. And these are all the different types. But what I do normally is I keep it all within one layer and then you can um, change stuff out um, once it's in there. And so this is just, it wants to know, you can put in, you can do it around and give it Atlanta, but I'm just gonna do the canvas extent. So literally what I'm looking at, run the query. All right, so if I turn off this open layer, you can now see it brought in these three layers. So we're actually gonna delete these. All right, so this is what is super cool about this. You can make this super custom to the way you want it. So there's a ton of information embedded in these layers. So if I go to the open the attribute table, um, you can see that every single one of these buildings, it's got the address uh, in the case where it has a name. You can actually have those appear as labels on the map um, if you want to cut those out or you're just making a map in general. Um, and so you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. And for our purposes, all we really care about is the way it looks on the map. So um, we're gonna jump into the styles. And so it's a fill. We don't want a line around it. So we're just gonna do it super simple like that. And we can keep it green. All right. And then one thing with this is you have to make it a permanent layer. The layer by making it permanent. All right, now we're gonna bring in some more information. This is going to be all of the highways. So this is all of the road data. Here's all the different types of roads it's gonna bring in. In the past, I've done this individually, but I figured out that you don't actually have to do that. You can bring them all in at once. Time. And it looks like we got all the information and I only need the line information. So we're gonna delete the points. Cool, so uh, this is all the highway information, but if you guys look at maps, especially like this, you can see that uh, the big highways are different thicknesses than the inner streets. 
So we can do something similar because you can see that if we actually drill into this information, there's a ton of different types of roads. So secondary, residential, service. So to do that, we're gonna double click, jump in again. And now instead of a single symbol, um, we're gonna do it as categorized. And so we're going to do um, random colors, classify. I wanna find what the highways are because I always forget what they are or the interstates. Okay, so it is this motorway is what we're looking at. Uh, and to do this, I'm going to change the thickness of the line. So it's gonna look the same thickness as you zoom in and zoom out. I don't want that. I want it to actually look specific thickness at a specific distance. So to do that, you can jump it into meters X scale. We're gonna make this all black, everything. And this is gonna help us later for the Illustrator file. And then I'm gonna bump this up to like five. I always forget which one it is. Uh, apply. Okay, so you can see that is getting bigger. And I actually have already saved styles. Uh, this is the main highway. It's really, really big. Now we've got our highways are done. And you can see if I turn this off, they are different than all of the other roads that are here. And you actually see the roads are color coded, so that would have helped. Uh, I didn't realize that. So I'm gonna go in and make uh, pretty much three different types. And I actually changed this up so uh, that these tertiary roads are going to be the same as these main roads. Um, and then all of the side streets are going to be a little bit different. So let's play around with this real quick. All right, so we've got all of our road info put in there. You can see that the bigger roads are thicker and the highway is the thickest. And then what's really cool is you can actually put in footpaths. So uh, these are actually, if I turn this off, these are little paths across campus. And so I've got this set as green, but just so you can see the difference because they're thinner, but I'm actually gonna change those up really quick and make them black. All right, and so I don't have to do all of that over again. Um, I'm actually going to save this as a style. All of that I can actually now do really quickly because I can just open that up and we are good to go. So uh, that is pretty much how I get all of this information. And now what I can do, and because these are saved to uh, separate layers and really they're separate colors and that's where it's gonna come in handy, is I can export this as a, this as a PDF and open Illustrator. So we are just in Adobe Illustrator and I am going to import that. And so what I can do once I get the thing embedded is I can release, actually ungroup, and then it's like a clipping mask. So I just release the clipping mask and there's all the information that is in there. And so uh, why I separated those by layers by different colors is because of that. So now in Illustrator and most vector uh, programs have something similar to this. So uh, you just do select, same, fill, color. And this is giving me all of my buildings. So I can pull it up to a new layer, buildings. And then normally what I do is I merge everything together. Uh, so it's all one thing. And if I turn everything else off, you can see my buildings are on their own layer. So when I pull that into my laser software, it will be good to go. So uh, this is all of the road data. And again, I am just going to merge everything and we are good to go. So this is all just one big file that's merged together that I can drop into uh, my software. So once I go here, um, I can basically can create a new clipping mask. I should be able to bring this in here into Lightburn. Cool, and now everything is clipped and good to go. And the way most laser softwares work is uh, different colors will automatically go to different layers. So I've got my buildings on a separate layer than my roads. And so that's maybe if I just wanna have different depths of cut um, when I knock this thing out. So uh, that's a uh, quick overview of the GQIS stuff. Uh, and you're able to wind up getting stuff that looks a little bit like this.
So once we've got the file pretty much knocked out, all we have to do is send it to the laser. There's a bunch of different ways you guys can do that depending on which laser you have. In my case, I have to use their really weird software to make it run, but I do a couple different passes and I get the thing knocked out. And then we wind up with something like this. You can have the elements be different depths. You can have them different thicknesses. Again, what's great about all of this is you can create it super custom. So maps like these are cool, but the ones that I really like are the ones that are topographical. So they're different layers that are stacked on top of each other, and then you glue them all up, and they are based on elevation information. So I was trying to think of somewhere cool, and if you guys remember last year, there was this random stuff on the internet about people who were going to raid Area 51. Three, two, one. I thought, why not make a map of Area 51? Because it's cool. Not only does it have like the normal map data, which we just got into, it's got a little example of elevation data. So um, each of these layers is actually 50 feet. And so every layer is 50 feet up and you could put the elevations on there if you wanted. Um, and you can imagine if you're doing something that was super hilly, you can do super crazy stuff um, as well as you can actually get into barometric data, which is like doing oceans and all that kind of stuff uh, where you can make these maps really neat. Again, here's some really cool examples, uh, a lot better than what this is, but this is really just kind of an example to walk you guys through the process because this is just, cardboard and super cheap. But you can raid Area 51. They can't stop all of us. So the laser is done. Let's get those cut pieces out. All right, so now we're going to assemble this and we're not gonna make it really super fancy. Chewy spray. And I'm just gonna be using super glue because that is all I've got. So this is way overkill. And I'm just realizing I cut it out a little crooked, but there are all of the layers. So kind of my next step is to figure out how to do the barometric data. And so I can get the depths of the ocean. I can make those different color and then have the land on top of that to where you do get something kind of like this, but a lot more detailed. I should look even cooler. I've included links both to this, Athens and Atlanta down below if you guys are interested in it. Uh, but really you guys can make your own thing because hopefully you know how it works. This was a little bit different, the format of this video. If you guys like ones like this that are more tutorial based, really get into the weeds on how to knock stuff out. Let me know down in the comments or really just watch it and I'll know. Till next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.